Okay, welcome back to a new LaTeX tutorial. Um, in this video, or in the previous video, I explained how you can uh, create drawings in LaTeX using ticks. And now I would like to go one step further uh, because also this question has been asked in the previous video. And I would like to explain now how you can create Feynman diagrams with the help of LaTeX and ticks. And yeah, uh, as usual, we directly start uh, by, by doing that. And then I will explain slowly, step by step, what you have to do for that. And at the end, when you uh, have followed everything which I explain in this video, you should be able to create any complicated diagram that ever you want to uh, draw. Okay, so I created here a new file called feynman.tech. And yeah, we start like last time um, with um, document class and in this case stand alone uh, because we want to again adjust our uh, page size to the uh, content and then we can create a new document with begin and end document yeah, just as usual and then as i explained last time we can create a new environment here begin and end uh, takes picture um, however now we do not include uh, ticks itself, we include another uh, package called ticks feynman. Yeah? And now um, we can compile that and you see nothing of course because we have not implemented anything but at least you are not getting an error message so it means the package is installed, everything is working well. You can see in one of my previous videos what you have to do if the package is not installed actually. Um, okay, now it always starts with vertices, yeah? So you have to create a vertex, um, similar to when you draw a Feynman diagram on a paper. So first you define where your particles meet. Yeah? So in this case, we can just create an arbitrary vertex, which we call A, and we do not have to insert any coordinate. Uh, we can just let it like this, and we have to then define all other vertices um, yeah, relative to that. There's also an auto positioning uh, available, but in order to do that, you have to use LuaTeX, yeah, which is a, another LaTeX framework. And I'm actually not a big fan of that uh, due to various reasons. And um, I think it also needs much longer time to, to, really, um, to really work well. Other people maybe have no problem with that, so you can try this. But um, for, for me, I'm always using PDF LaTeX. And so for this purpose, then I have to uh, define the vertex position manually. But as I said, it totally depends on your choice. Yeah? So um, now we have to create another vertex, of course, because one vertex is not enough. Uh, and we always have to use a semicolon. Uh, this I didn't mention last time, but I hope this gets clear when you follow my video. Always, whenever you finish a command, you have to uh, stop that with a semicolon. So now um, we want to have another vertex above left of a yeah so we go one up one unit up and one unit to the left yeah of course you can also use ticks and create your the Feynman diagram completely yourself you don't need all these commands you can also draw the lines manually uh, but of course this would take much more time and if somebody has done this already in the form of a package it would be like reinventing the wheel and i think in this case it would not be beneficial at all so we can use these um, commands which are already available so above left um, equal of a means that we go one up one unit up and one to the left and we create a new vertex which we call b and this is similar to the nodes which i explained yesterday or in the last video so um here here we want to create an electron yeah so let's call that uh, e minus and again we have to use a semicolon and now we just copy and paste this line because one electron is not enough. We also need an incoming positron. So what we want to do, we want to have an incoming electron and positron. They meet in vertex A. Yeah? And um, yeah, and then they annihilate and create a photon. So this we want this process we want to create now. So we write here above left of um, of A. Uh, there we have to of course write below left of A. And this vertex we call C. And this should be a uh, positron yeah going in backward time direction okay um yeah and then we will also not see anything now we can compile this and you will see yeah you will see an error message and this is because i forgot one environment here and this is begin feynman of course this is very essential um 
Otherwise, uh, otherwise you just draw a ticks, pack a ticks figure, but not a Feynman one. Yeah? So you want to have a Feynman diagram, so you have to put it into this environment in order to make sure that LaTeX understands your command. And now you can do that. And now you see here our two vertices, E plus and E minus. Um, but of course, no lines. And this we do inside this Feynman environment. We have to uh, create or use this command diagram. Yeah, and this creates, uh, let's write it like this. And this here we have to insert now our uh, connections between these vertices. Yeah, so for example, let's go from this vertex B, which is the electron, to, yeah, uh, okay, first let's define, this should be a fermion um, because it's an electron. So it will be a, a straight line, a solid line without any dash or um, yeah, any, any uh, curly moves. So in this case, we go from B to A. And then again, it should be a fermion going from uh, going from A to C in this direction. Yeah? And now again, we have to stop this with a semicolon. And now you can compile that. Yeah, and you get an error message because uh, this I'm always forgetting also myself, but it's very important to remember behind that last curly bracket after diagram you also have to put a semicolon otherwise it will not work okay now we can see here our very nice uh, first part of the Feynman diagram yeah it looks quite uh, professional I think so you can directly insert this in, in your thesis for example yeah so now of course it's not complete we need also a photon here yeah so for that purpose we create another vertex um, and uh, this should be just right of a, yeah, so we want to go one unit to the right from this vertex A here. And maybe we call this just D. Of course, you can also think about different names, naming scheme, which is a little bit easier to understand for uh, if you think it's too complicated. And yeah, so now we have another vertex D, right of A. And um, then we can go to our diagram section again and um, create a line from, uh, from A to D. And this should be a boson yeah, because it's a photon. So for, for that, you have to uh, use this connection here. And uh, yeah, when you do that and compile this, now you see we have this very nice photon here um, created. So this is also very simple. What we can also do in addition, um, this I want to show how to uh, label that. So you, for example, write edge label equals and then in math mode gamma. Uh, so now we have here a gamma and what you can also, for example, add is uh, momentum. This is a command which is implemented already uh, and this we could maybe just call K. So now we have just the K here um, and as you see, it's uh, drawn upwards, but you want to have it down below the line. So what you can do is make a make uh, make this uh, single quotation here, single quotation sign, and then you see that K shifts down. Yeah, So it just looks a little bit more uh, beautiful yeah? uh, and readable. So now what we can do now, um, we can create now another mu plus mu minus pair, for example, just uh, pair production, but uh, this would be a little bit too boring. And I think you could do this now yourself easily by just creating more vertices. But what I would like to do in addition is creating a loop. Yeah? So what we can do now, we can uh, copy paste this line two times and we want to create another vertex E right of D and another vertex F right of E. And uh, yeah, again, if we run this, it should not uh, change anything, but we have to go now from D to E. And uh, again, we have to go from E to F. Now you see it just creates a straight line, which is not what we want to have. Yeah. So in this case, what we have to do, um, we have to first of all um, here write boson again. Um, sorry, not for this connection here, but for this connection. And now we have a boson, straight line boson, but we don't want to have a straight line here. We want to actually create a half circle. So what we have to write here is fermion uh, half left. So now we get a circle which is bent in that direction. Um, and we also want to label that. Uh, let's suppose we want to label this um, as an 
as an electron. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we get an uh, error message because edge label would be the right command which we have to add. Okay, now you can see here we have this half circle. One can also use a quarter left, for example, uh, just to show it. Uh, but this would look like this, and I think this is not correct. In this case, we would have to use a half left. Yeah, but I'm not an expert also in Feynman diagrams. It's just uh, from what I still remember. Okay, um, and then we would have to uh, copy that. And now we have to go uh, either from from D to E again, but th then we have to uh, create a half right circle. But since we want to create a positron here, we have to go backwards in time. So we have to go from E to D and this will be a positron and half left would be still correct. And now you see you have now an elect and positron going into the opposite direction. Yeah? And this I think is exactly how, um, yeah, how a Feynman diagram uh, with a loop should look like. And now of course we uh, can finish that um, by practicing a little bit how it works. So we have now a vertex F, which is here on the right. And we want to have two muons. So, uh, sorry, above right of F would be another vertex, let's call it G. And we can again copy and paste this line and write um, below right of F, there should be another one, which is called H. And uh, yeah, now we can uh, we can look here. We can go from G again. It should be a fermion uh, to F, and from there again a fermion to H. I hope I didn't do any mistake. Now, when you compile this, you can see now here our nice. Um, yeah, our nice Feynman diagram. And of course, uh, we also want to label this. So as I said, for practicing purpose, I will do that now. And we can write here in math mode, mu uh, minus. So and um, here, no, sorry, this should be a mu plus, of course, because it's going backwards in time. And then the same we can do here also. Um, and insert here a label uh, sorry, mu minus. Yeah, and now we can compile this. And as you see now, we have our ready uh, Feynman diagram. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I think you know everything. In order to to even draw more complicated diagrams, maybe you can try a penguin diagram, which is I think one of the more most complicated ones. But you can also uh, change different the position of different vertices. See how this changes. Uh, maybe you can try to model a beta decay, which is uh, not so much difficult, I think, um, with uh, two spectator uh, quarks and uh, one quark, which is actually decaying via W boson into neutrino, electron, and so on. And you can uh, try to, to just play around with that. Yeah. And I hope that now with this, you know everything what you need to know. Uh, and um, as usual, if you like the content, if you like the video which I have created, please hit the like button. Um, the yeah, the more likes I get, the more I know what other videos I should uh, make more in the future. And of course, if you um, like the video, then also subscribe my channel if you want to. Don't want to miss any further videos which I create, whether it is LaTeX, Python, um, uh, GN4, Root, and so on. Yeah, so there are many options uh, to follow. And uh, yeah, then uh, hopefully see you soon for a new video. Um, yeah, which I will make. Uh, yeah, I don't want to take, I hopefully it will not take so much time to make a new one. Okay, until then, see you later.